and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be covering topics under the standard 4.1 in 8th grade and also under the study island lesson entitled Area, Surface Area, and Volume. And I've broken that study island lesson down into two videos, so this is going to be part one of two videos. So if you're working in that lesson, make sure that you watch both videos before you try all the questions. In this video, we're going to be looking at the problems where we're calculating surface area and volume of 3D objects. So just remember, as we're going through this video, please be taking notes. There's going to be formulas and vocabulary words that you're going to need to have written down so that you can reference them when you're trying these problems on your own, and that so you can also study them. And if I go too fast, just pause. And then you can rewind too if need be so that you can stay caught up in your notes and you can even the pause at the beginning of the question. You try to find the surface area and volume and then watch the video to see where you got things right and maybe where you still need to work and learn a little bit more in other areas. And so I'm so glad that you're joining us and let's go ahead and take some notes. So first we're going to want to understand what surface, how surface area and volume are calculated. So surface area means that when you take a 3D object, a solid figure, and lay it out so that you see the net, that you're going to find the area of each of the faces and add them together. So surface area is the sum of the area of all the sides. Whereas volume, you would take the area of your base or the bottom and then times that area by the height to see how much room that solid figure takes up. And here are some common surface area and volume formulas. And this is the surface area and volume formula for a rectangular prism. The L here stands for length, the W stands for width, and the H stands for height. And so you would just plug those numbers in and substitute. These are the formulas for a cylinder. So the R here stands for the radius, and the H stands for height. So you would just plug these in, and pi is 3.14, and sometimes you just leave the pi as part of your answer, depending on what form they ask for. These are the formulas for a triangular prism. So your base and height are going to represent the base and height of the triangular base, and then the big H is going to represent the height of the entire prism. And then your M and N and represent the other two side lengths of the triangular prism. So here I have a rectangular prism, and they tell me that X is 6, Y is 17, and Z is 5, and it wants to know what is the surface area. So I can use the formula that I wrote down in my notes, and you could give that a try. Go ahead and pause the video. Or you could just think about what surface area means. Surface area means I have to find the area of each side, so it's going to be six sides, and add them together. So here, x, my bottom and my top are going to have the same area, and to find the area of the bottom and the top, I'm going to have to take x times z, but I know that x is 6, and z is 5, so to find that area, I'm going to have 6 times 5, which is 30, and I have two of those sides, so I'm going to have to count them twice, so either 30 plus 30 or 30 times 2, which is 60. So that's two of them. Okay, I have my front and back side, which is 6 times 17 to find my front and back side, both of them. So I'm going to take 6 times 17. And 6 times 17 is 102. And I have two of those, so 102 times 2, or 102 plus 102, is 204 for the front and back. So it's two more sides. I have two left, and that's going to be my left and right sides. My left and right sides have a length of 5 and a width of 17. So I'm going to have to take 5 times 17 to find one of those sides. And 5 times 17 is 85. 
And then to get both of them, their total areas, I'm going to take that times 2, or 85 plus 85, which is 170. So then I have to add up those three numbers, and when I add 170 plus 60 plus 204, I get 434 units squared, which is choice D. So here I'm at, once again asked to find the surface area, but this time it's of a triangular prism. I went ahead and labeled the sides with the values that they give us, and I would try your best to copy down this figure and do the same. And so on that means I'm going to have to find the surface area, either using the formula in my notes, or by finding the area of both the triangles and the three rectangles and adding them together. So my rectangles, I or my triangles, I know are going to be the same. And to find the area of a triangle, I take one half times base times the height of that triangle. So I'm going to have one half times, here my base is 18 and my height is 12. This is going to be times 18 times 12. Well, 1 half times 18 is 9, and 9 times 12 is 108. And I have two of those triangles, one in the front and one in the back. So the area of both those triangles together is 216. And then I have to find the, these rectangles. And I typically want to find these three rectangles separately. Um, because it, the triangle could have three different lengths, so they could all be different. Here, because this triangle has two lengths the same, you'll have two that are matching, but it's always a good habit to get into just finding them all separately. So I'm going to have 15 times 7, and that's going to be the length for this rectangle here on my top left side. And it's also going to be the length times width for my top right side also. So I'm going to have two of those. And 15 times 7 is 105. And then all I have left is my bottom rectangle, and its lengths are 7 and 18. So I'm going to take 7 times 18, and that's 126. So then I'm going to have to go ahead and add 216 plus 105 plus 126. And when I add those four numbers all together, I get 512 unit, 552 units squared, which is choice D. Here I'm going to ask to find the surface area of the cylinder above. And when you're working with the cylinder, typically the easiest way is to use the formula. So I went ahead and wrote that down. And if I look at my answers, they all have pi in it. So that means I'm not going to use 3.14 for pi. I'm just going to leave it as part of my number and just keep carrying it through until I get my answer. So that means here I'm going to have 2 times pi times my radius value squared. So my radius, they tell us, is 6. So it's going to be 6 squared plus 2 times pi times my radius value which is 6, times my height value, when the height of my cylinder is from circle to circle, so that's going to be x, which is 9. And so then I just go through and multiply what numbers I can. So here I'm going to have 2 times pi times the 6 squared, which is 36. And then 2 times 36 is 72, and I just keep that pi with it. That's going to be plus, so here I have 2 pi, and then 6 times 9 is 72. And then, because you can multiply in any order, I can take 72 times 2, which is 108. So I'm going to have 108 pi. And I can go ahead and add these together, because they both have pi as part of their number, so I can just add the number out front. And when I do that, 108 plus 72 is 180, and that pi sticks with it. So that's going to make my final answer here D. So in this problem, we have two cylinders that hold raisins at a store, and they give us the dimensions. And it want to know what is the difference in volumes of the two centimeters in cubic centimeters. So that just tells us it's all in centimeters, so we don't have to do any converting. So difference means that we're going to subtract 
So that, that means we're going to have to find the volume of the small cylinder and the big cylinder and then subtract them. And so they go ahead and they give us the formula. And as you see, they leave pi in the answer. So we're, we're not going to use 3.14, we're just going to use the symbol pi. So here, I'm going to calculate this volume on the smaller cylinder. I'm going to have pi, and it tells us r squared, so it's going to be radius squared, and my radius here is 8, so I'm going to have 8 squared times, and then the height of the cylinder is how far apart the circles are, so that's 21 centimeters here. And then I'm going to go ahead and have to calculate that volume. So my first step is order of operations. I'm going to take 8 squared first, which is 64. And then I'm going to take that 64 times 21. And you might have to do that off to the side. That's fine. And when you take 64 times 21, that is 1,344. And then I just keep carrying that pi through to the end. And so... The next one, I'm going to calculate the volume of my big cylinder. So I'm, I'm going to have, according to the formula, I'm going to have pi times the radius squared. The radius here is 11. Don't forget to square it. And then the height, so how far apart the circles are, is 44 centimeters. And so same steps. I do the exponent first. So 11 squared is 121. And then off on the side, you're going to have to calculate what is 121 times 45. And when you calculate that, you should get 5,445. And the pi just carries through to the end. And so now I'm going to have to subtract these two numbers. I'm going to have to subtract 5,445 minus 1,344 pi. And when you're subtracting two numbers with pi, it works just like an exponent. The pi just keeps carrying through. And here, I'm left with 4,101 pi, and that's in centimeters cubed, so that's going to make my final answer C. So now I'm asked to find the volume of a triangular prism. And remember, to find the volume of a prism, you find the area of the base and times it by the height. So my base here is a triangle. And the base, or the area of a triangle, is calculated by taking one-half base times height. So I'm going to have one-half times the base of this triangle is y, which is 24. And the height of the triangle, the base triangle, is h, which is 16. So half of 24 is 12, and 12 times 16 is 192. So that's the area of the triangular base. Now to find the volume, I just take the that times the height of the prism. So how far apart these triangles are, which is z, and z is 8. So 192 times 8 is going to be 1,536 cubic units, which is choice B. This problem asks us to find the volume of a cube. And so I know that x is 2. And because it's a cube, I know that every other edge is also 2. So to find the area of the base, I'm going to take length times width, which is 2 times 2, which is 4. And then I'm going to take that times the height, which is also 2. And 4 times 2 is 8 cubic units. So it's going to make my final answer A. My last problem says Samantha just purchased a new rectangular purse to match her favorite shoes. The purse has a length of 12 and 7 tenths centimeters, a width of 5 and 9 ninth centimeters, and a height of 8 centimeters. What is the volume of the purse? So when you're working with a rectangular prism, like this purse is, volume is length times width times height. And so I'm just going to multiply those three numbers. So you're going to take 12.7 times 5.9, and you're going to have to work that out on the side. And once you find that answer, you're going to have to take that times 8. 
Once you multiply all three of those numbers together, you should get 599.44 centimeters cubed, which is answer choice A. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.